Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today what we got for you is a tier list. I haven't done a tier list in forever, but I thought this would be a great time since we had this brand new brawl mode that came out in Predecessor. Uh, I got about 50 some odd games and I feel like I've seen every hero at least a few times. So I thought let's go over all the best heroes or all the worst heroes and let's organize them. And if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe for brand new predecessor content. 98% of you guys are not subscribed. Anyways, let's jump right in. The first hero we're going to put in the list here is Argus. Now, Argus is pretty solid. I think that he's probably going to be like an A tier for me. And I will tell you, there is better mid laners. There's better mid laners because I feel like his attacks are more prone to taking out like one hero at a time. Um, he's super good in like, you know, like standard queue, um, like a normal match. But in this, I'm going to have to I'd say he's still pretty good. He's he's an A, a tier. I might even put him down at B just if there's so many good A tiers. But um, yeah, I just feel like, again, his crowd control isn't that good for like every hero uh his ult only targets one uh granted it is like a sniper shot you can shoot that thing across the map which is kind of sick so anyways um that's how we feel about argus we're gonna go in next with aurora uh we're gonna go ahead and put aurora ahead of argus um aurora is also going to be an a tier she actually does have better crowd control she's able to um you know mitigate a lot of damage for your team with her ultimate that freezes enemies she has that ice circle attack you know that freeze that stuns them again um she has a ton of slowing ability so she's just great for the team she can get right in your face do a shit ton of damage uh she's super good all right next on the list is going to be countess and i have a lot of fun with countess i don't know if she's then uh, i'm gonna put her in b tier because again she's more of like good at solo like killing one or two of them as are all the assassins right all the assassins are going to be good at killing like one or two of them um but her specifically i feel like is a solid b tier she's um a lot of high damage high burst ability damage as well so she can you know she can slip onto you do all of her her kit and then slip back into her shadow slip and um and she takes like very little damage so she's going to be a high b tier for that all right so next in the list is crunch and i feel like crunch is going to be ahead of argus crunch is very good um his ability to stun you and just keep you stun locked is annoying as hell honestly if you're the enemy of him he's just very good he's super strong uh uppercuts you can dash away like nothing happened in no time his his um scaling ability with how much damage he does is insane throughout the match so yeah he's gonna get a nice uh spot in a tier for that all right so next we have is uh, let's get this a uh, decker so decker i'm gonna say she's like a c tier she's borderline to d tier to be honest her her damage output like this this game mode favors damage and um she's not one of those supports that deal a lot of damage um she's pretty good at locking people in which her containment can do she can stun with her ult but overall, I feel like she's not that good. I I tend to miss uh, like her stasis bombs consistently because everybody's moving so fast in this game mode. Nobody's really sitting in a straight line, going in a straight path. They're all squirreling all over the place. So I miss a whole bunch with her. Um, her containment kind of makes her a high C tier because she can contain heroes and save her team quite nicely in some scenarios. But yeah, just C tier. All right, moving into the list, we got Drongo. I actually think Drongo is very strong. Drongo does a lot of damage, as does all the carries, but Drongo just has a, a way to get away um, with his ult so he can like shoot and go backwards. He's like made for this game mode, if you ask me. He's one of the heroes that are super strong in this game mode. Um, he silences, so you're not able to do abilities when he's using his rad rounds. Um, his gas bomb of course does a bunch of damage his boomerang does a ton of damage he just scales really well with damage um throughout the entire 15 minutes of each brawl game and he is a menace 
Uh, so next we got is another assassin. We have Fang Mao. I think Fang Mao is super strong in this game mode. Um, I'm I'm probably just gonna I'm gonna put him here in front of uh, the Argus and Aurora and Crunch because I think he's that good. Um, his ultimate you can just keep spamming it if you keep getting takedowns with his ultimate, and uh, he just he, his damage output is just insane. He's able to cast a shield, remove, it moves him really quick. He has a teleport, so he can get the fuck out of dodge whenever he wants. Um, and like I mentioned, if he keeps getting takedowns, he'll just keep ulting on you. And any decent player playing Fang Mao is going to have a fun time in this game mode. Uh, so Grim. Grim has been updated, and he is now insane. He's absolutely insane. He's probably better than Drongo as well. I'm going to say he's probably a bit better than Drongo. Um, just due to the fact that his damage output again is insane. The, the way that they buffed Grim this season is, is uh, well, this last update, it's awesome. He's super strong. He can run you down. His ult does a, a like half, um, you know, a squishy person's health end game. Uh, yeah, he's a beast. So, all right, next we got is Gadget. I'm going to say Gadget is pretty damn good. Her Tesla Dome Ultimate, um, I'm going to put her in A tier behind Argus. His, his Tesla Dome is insanely good. Her Sticky Bomb deals a ton of damage and very easy to throw that onto a group of people. Um, she can slow with her uh, drone that she throws out, and then she also has a stun. Uh, with the tripwire, the safety security gate. Um, so she's just very good. She's an A tier because her crowd control is very good. She can stun people. Um, she has that big Tesla dome, does a shit ton of damage. Like a, a decent gadget will screw you up in this game. Next we got is Gideon. Gideon is by far going to be um, an S tier. I'd, I'd actually say he's probably ahead of the two carries here. I think he's that good. Gideon's ult, you get Astral Catalyst on him. You can just keep spamming his ult, and it's uh, it's GG's every time. Like, I don't know how he gets it down so far with his Astral Catalyst, but I've had a, a Gideon like spam his ult like every 20 seconds against my team, and we just couldn't do anything. His black hole will, will pull everybody in uh, unless you have a blink. You're pretty much just you're dead by Gideon's ult. So yeah, definitely an S tier, and the rest of his kit just does a shit ton of damage. He's a menace. Alright, so next we have is Greystone. I'm gonna stay I'm gonna say that Greystone's good. I'm gonna put him in B tier though. Um he's he's a good bruiser for this game mode for sure. You know, he has his ultimate where he can kind of land down and uh, he has a leap. He can leap away or leap on top of you, kind of keep dealing damage with this Firestorm. Um, I just think he gets singled out a lot and dies quite quickly, um, even with his Resurrection Ultimate. So yeah, uh, I'm going to say B tier, but he's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to put Grux kind of in a similar area here. And the good thing about Grux is he has that bleed. So even if you do blink away, if you're low health, you end up dying anyways because this bleed just never ends. It's kind of like the poison from freaking Morgish. That stuff just keeps, uh, you know, tanking damage until you die, basically. So he's very good, um, but he's kind of... There's, there's some more powerful heroes than Grux. Uh, I like his stun. I like that he has a pull. Um... Just all those things are, are very good from him. Very nice for the team as well. Getting some CC on them. So next we have is Howitzer. I'm going to say Howitzer is also going to be A tier. Howitzer is A tier because he just he just has a, a shit ton of damage that can be thrown out there at, at will. And uh, and it just feels like it really drowns the team. It's, it's insane. So yeah, he's A tier for me due to that alone. And uh, yeah, the, the damage from Make It Rain plus his ability to sticky bomb you and maybe, you know, bounce you back towards him to do even more damage. Um, yeah, he's a menace out there. All right, next we got is Iggy. So 
Iggy, I'm going to put in... I'm going to say C tier. I don't think he's too strong in Brawl. Um, I think that he can do quite nice, uh, you know, collective damage. But people just kind of stay away from his turrets or destroy them in this game mode. Like, a whole group of people can swarm Iggy and just overwhelm him and kill him. His fire damage is nice, but it's just it's too much for him in this game mode. I, I think that Iggy's strong suit is defending against like two players, two or three, but when there's a whole team, I just feel like they swarm Iggy and, and just destroy him. Uh, so next we have is Kalari. Now, Kalari can be an S tier, but she can also be a D tier. Kind of depends on who's playing Kalari. Uh, I'm going to put her then in the solid middle. Eh, yeah, probably a B tier. Not that she's bad. She's actually pretty damn strong in this game mode. Um, again, it just depends on who's playing her because she's such an expert level, skill level hero that you have to kind of know how, how to use her to jump in and out. But she could get a bunch of easy ganks, you know, on the sides of the of the group fights, the gank fights. She can be in and out rather quickly as well with her double jump and also invisibility cloaking. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say just B tier. Uh, next we got is Chimera. And I'm actually going to make all these small. Hang on. I'm going to make them all small because they are going to make us run out of room here. But yeah, um, so next we have is Chimera. Chimera is good, but here's the thing about Chimera. Chimera doesn't have any way to escape. And in Brawl, you need some form of like escapability. Uh, otherwise, you just get singled out. Like, I'll be honest here. Like, a lot of Chimeras in this game mode are getting just wrecked because there's so many freaking. There's, it, there's just too many people attacking Chimera and you can't escape and just dies. So, I'm going to put them there. I don't know. I guess I'll put them right, right in front of Kalari, but. Just because he is strong. He does have a stun with his ultimate, but yeah. Fix this here. Okay, so next up we got is Kira. So Kira is also a decent carry. However, she's not as strong as the other carries. So I am going to put her at the back of the A tier list. Um, Kira can be very good, though, and she can kind of run away with the game. So... Um, she's definitely an A tier just due to the fact that she's insane. You know, if you scale her, build some good items, she will be taking out a lot of people in the back line. Uh, so yeah, we'll put her there for now. And let me fix these two. All right, so next up we got is Quang. And here's the thing about Quang. Even in off lane and standard queue, He's he's all right. Like he's not a terrible player, but I don't feel like he's that strong at all in Brawl. I think that there's just again, there's too many players where he doesn't really get through uh very well to do what he's good for, which is, you know, throw down that sword, teleport into it to uppercut you and stun you and keep dealing, you know, insane amounts of damage. So I am going to put him in the back of C tier just cuz again, I don't think he's very good in this game mode. Um He's pretty decent in um, in off lane and standard queue, but that's about it, in my opinion. I don't even think he's that good at jungling. All right, so next we got is Bellica. So, yes, she has a very good ult, and yes, she can be quite damage heavy. Um, I just feel like there's other damage heroes that are even better. So I want to put her at the top of... Yeah, I kind of want to put her here at the top of this group. So let me grab these here. And the reason I think that she should be here is because her ultimate does just destroy. It absolutely obliterates, especially if they're, they're low enough. You just finish them with her ult. Her stun is nice. Her bomb is very good. Does a lot of damage. Um, overall, I think that she's good. But she's not great. Um, what do we got next? Uh, so, Morgish, I am going to put her at the back of the line here. Just because, again, she's not good for group control. And she can kill one or two people. But you don't really see her taking out squads. And in this game mode, she's she just kind of struggles a bit, in my opinion. Um, 
See, I'm going to put her at the back of B tier for that reason. Next we got is Murdoch. Murdoch is super strong. He's a very strong carry. You'll see a theme here, right? Like all the carries are basically kind of A tier for me. Unless you're counting Kira. I, I don't know. Maybe I just don't don't see very many good Kiras. Maybe people are insane with Kira and she could be an A tier. But I think Murdoch is super strong and he always has been a strong choice for a carry. So yeah, we'll put him there. Let's jump in next to whoops says uh, open something um so next we got is muriel and yeah sorry muriel you're just you you're not that good in this game mode you know the whole point of a muriel is for her ult to be able to like save people um this game's just too fast paced i feel for her ult to make much of a difference much of an impact and her cooldowns are lengthy, her bubble shielding, it's nice, but I don't feel like it puts any team over the top. So yeah, she's a D tier. I just don't think she's that good. But on the other end of the spectrum, we have Narbash. Narbash is insanely good. He's one of the best freaking supports, in my opinion. Uh, heals the entire team. The entire team's already grouped together. Narbash is insane in this game mode, so I'm going to put him in A tier. And then on the receiving end of that, we have the worst player that you could be in this game mode, which is Faye, or FaZe, excuse me. FaZe is definitely going to be the worst because she's designed to keep your carry alive. One person. She's not designed to help a team, and she can't help a team, and she just dies and she sucks. So yeah, D tier. She's good in, in normal Q. She's good in normal Q because you can hug your carry, you can keep your carry alive, you can spam abilities that save him. Uh, in this, it, it, she just makes little to no impact in the overall game. Alright, next up we got is Rampage. I actually like Rampage. He's super fun in this game mode. Um, I'm going to put him in B tier. I don't think he's bad. But the thing about Rampage is he just... I don't know, I feel like... He just isn't insane, you know, like he's he's good. He can throw his boulder. It's one of the longer stuns of all the heroes, but he's not like he's not insane. Like I don't see him doing a, a crap ton of damage or anything like that. Um, his ultimate is nice. He gets a huge regen buff and he's like ginormous and it's super funny to get his ultimate with giant's ring and the purple buff so he's like super ultra mega big like that's kind of a beam and that's fun but yeah he's just he's he's kind of mid he's b tier all right next up we have is revenant i actually don't like revenant as a carry in this game mode i think i think as a carry in this game mode he absolutely kind of sucks um also, his his ultimate is mostly to save his own ass. Like that's that's pretty much the main times I've seen his ultimate used um, in this game mode. Is I'm gonna ult somebody and run away so I can heal. I just don't think he's strong enough to make a. It, he's not as strong as the other carries, but he is a carry, so he's a B tier because yes, he does deal a lot of damage. I just feel like his. His times, like, when he's useful is very slim compared to standard Q. And even in standard Q, he's kind of, he's in a rough spot, in my opinion. So next up we got is Richter. And I think, I think Richter's kind of a C tier, to be honest. I think he's C. And I say that because he, he can pull people and then the group just dominates who he pulls. So that, that is a huge plus for him. But otherwise... I don't think he's as strong as some of the other supports you can choose. Um, another one coming up that I think is a better support. Yeah, I'm going to put C tier for him, but maybe you guys feel differently about that. Um, next up we have is Sarath. I think Sarath is super good. Um, she is a great hero, but I don't think she's really that strong in this game mode. And uh, I, again, think she's better at just taking out one or two you know not worrying about huge team fights which is what this game is it's just team fights i'm gonna put her in the front of c tier because she's good she deals damage um 
I just don't think she's like better than a lot of the other heroes here. Uh, so I do like um, Severog a lot as a tank. I think I think he's A tier. Um, also, they changed the way Severog's uh, stacks work. As you know, with the regular stacks with Severog, he has to kill minions. Well, in this game mode, you can get assists um, on heroes and stuff, and it still boosts his uh, his stacks. So they made him really good for this game mode specifically, and you guys should try it out. You'll see how many stacks you get. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot. So he actually scales nicely in Brawl, and uh, yeah, he's going to be A tier for sure because of that. Yeah, we're kind of getting down to the list here. We got about eight more. Um, next up is Shinbi. Uh, I think Shinbi kind of sucks in this game mode. Okay, and... <laughs> Like she's she's fun. She's fun to play. Um her ultimate's pretty good, has a lot of damage on it. Uh the problem is is she can't really contain people. Like she doesn't have any way of stunning people or anything. I just think she's a C tier because she she's good at, you know, ganking people, but she's not really good in the group fight. She doesn't really help much um do group damage, damage to all heroes in an area. So yeah, she is definitely C tier, back of C tier for me. Um, if they ever bring back Sparrow, you know, she's right now, she's banned in this game mode. I guess she's that insane. But yeah, she's going to be an S tier just due to the fact that her damage is really high. Um, when she when she does her ultimate, she could attack an entire group of people because of the spread on her ultimate. And that thing just, that's destroyed me many times. That might be why she's banned. Maybe her area damage is too insane with her ultimate. Um, but yeah, she's definitely an S tier. Okay, next up we have is Steel. And I also think Steel is an A tier support. Just like how we have, uh, who's the other one? Narbash in here as a support. I think he's that insane. Um, I think he's very good at helping his team. He has three stuns. He has a energy wall that blocks all incoming projectiles that is great for the team. His entire kit is designed for group fighting and he does an insane job at it. All right, next up we have is Faye. And I think Faye is the only one that's behind Gideon. And I think that Faye is extremely strong in this game mode. Um, her Bramble Patch, huge area damage. Her Nettles does a ton of damage. She has Untamed Growth. Again, a lot of area damage. And then her Ultimate will bind everybody into her Fly Trap. And that will screw an entire team over and they will all die. I think that she's S tier for sure. Uh, Twin Blast, I'm going to have to say he's back of S tier, but he's definitely an S tier. His damage is insane. He's very good. In all scenarios of the group fights, um, you know, the only problem with all these these carries is they're squishy. People who who go 0 and 10 with any of these carries are just not staying behind a support or a tank or something that they need to, to do. But otherwise, all these guys deal a shit ton of damage. Um, next up we have is Wraith. I think Wraith is good, but he's not great. He's good because he can stay in the back line. He can snipe. He has his invisibility. Um, so he can kind of get away from danger. Um, the back it up is a nice ultimate as well. Kind of rewinds a hero that's moving quickly. So I think he's good. He's A tier though because I feel like he's just a little slow. Like all these other carries are attacking very fast. Very, very fast damage. You have to hit his snipes, first of all, so if you're not very good at sniping with him, he might as well be a, a, a C tier. But if you hit all your snipes, I think he's a solid A tier. All right, and to end things off, we have Zerus. I want to put a Zerus in A tier as well. I think that he's an A tier because when he ults, it's going to keep everybody locked in. And you can ult an entire group of people. A Gideon can then ult on top of that ultimate that Zerus threw down so in that Coliseum everybody's just dying and it's epic um, I mean I played a game with Zerus, Gideon and Faye and whenever one of us would ult 
we would do another ult and they would just die and we won easy games playing these three heroes um i just think he's great for the team his coliseum just locks everybody in nobody can leave everybody dies he does a shit ton of damage he has a stun he's got some got a nice little dash um very solid hero but yeah that that actually concludes all of our heroes here um again a lot of fun playing this new game mode i think that it's it's a challenge that a lot of people haven't had in a long time and it's just a straight up team death match um my only qualm the only thing i really despise about brawl is it just feels dumb with the orb prime whoever gets the orb prime pretty much just wins the game because it's 50 freaking points on top of the massive buff you get so i think that they either need to remove or prime or they need to make it so it's like 10 points or something less extreme because pretty much whoever gets or prime the game just ends in fact the game should just end on whoever gets or prime because it's very very few like i don't know two percent of the time the other team will win even though you got or prime unless you're getting them by a landslide and the other team's just not paying attention and they somehow sneak it, but it just feels like Orb Prime pretty much locks down the game. But hope you guys enjoyed the tier list. Let me know what you guys thought differently of these selections. Maybe you guys think I'm fucking on something choosing these uh, heroes in this fashion. But as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Peace out.